I will now call, invite Dr. Ndlozi from EFF. Thank you very much, and uh, revolutionary regards to the leadership in the Progressive Caucus. The presidency is responsible for eight functions, 11 task teams, and six SOEs, and it is here to ask for money. Deputy President, when you spoke last Friday, Floyd Shibambo, you characterized the sitting president as being a candidate for an award in fiction best fiction in literary sciences. But you see, it doesn't look like you were heard about what you were diagnosing. I think we must have to upgrade the diagnosis and borrow from the ideological toolkit of Franz Fanon. We may be dealing with psychosis, whose, whose symptoms are delusions, illusions, because Zeik Simda, when he writes DP, he knows that he's writing fiction. But our candidate tonight truly believes in the delusions that he gives us. One million houses in Alex. He believes that. It's a proper belief. And Fanon teaches us about cognitive dissonance. That when you tell such a person who suffers from these symptoms the truth, they hold on so much to their core belief they become agitated and comfortable. If you tell him now that he's wearing a blue tie, he may tell you he's convinced that he's not even dressed. Just today, after being warned of delusions, he comes to this platform and says, unsafe toilets have been replaced in 92% of schools needing safe toilets. The remaining 280 schools are scheduled for completion within this financial year. But the report of the basic education department titled Education Facility Management System Report, published 3 July 2024, says there are 1,770 pit toilets, schools with pit toilets. 280, 120. This is not a candidate of fiction. We have passed the stage of fiction, and we are dealing with mental illness. That is why Order. those who come here to defend Order, him. That is why those who come Order, to defend chair. him. Honorable Ndlozi, can you please take a seat uh, behind you? Thank you, Chair. Chair, Honorable Ndlozi, on the podium is reflecting on the president's state of mind. And I think it's in violation of Rule 85 Sub 1. 85 Sub 1. I believe the rule is being violated by Honorable Dozi, Chair. Thank you. He's not a medical doctor. Thank you, Honorable Member. I think you were meant to quote uh, Rule 84. That is unparliamentary and unacceptable language or gestures. And also, no member may use offensive, abusive, insulting, disrespectful, unbecoming, and unparliamentary words or language. No offensive or unbecoming or threatening gestures. So, Honorable Ndlozi, uh, please, when you take the podium, can you refrain from doing so? And please withdraw that. With respect, Chair, what must I withdraw? Withdraw calling the president. Point of order. Point of order. Honorable Shibam. I'm sure uh, I was Chair. With time, you begin to appreciate some of the precedence issues on the rulings. Of we had a contention in the fifth parliament. Where they were can you get closer to the mic because I can't hear you. You can sit, it's fine. And I want to, to, to talk to you standing up. 
We have got precedents in this house where a word schizophrenia was utilized to characterize a member of parliament. After a process of the rules committee and proper interpretation, even legal advice, it was concluded that such is a permissible word. And that exactly describes what Komisambu Isen is talking about now, of delusions, of illusions, of imaginary articulations that were made by someone here. And there is absolutely nothing wrong because precedence already has been set in terms of that ruling. So please don't do what you are doing now of saying you must withdraw because that is not consistent with the rules of this National Assembly. So your ruling is conclusively wrong. And you will realize when we then later on induct you uh, in the rules committee of how these questions are handled. So please, let's allow the speaker to proceed uh, to characterize the phenomenon that we're dealing with now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Shibambu. Honorable Josi, as I had said, that please refrain from using such um, insultive words from the podium. Uh, you, may con you may continue, but we will consult Hansard and later come back with the uh, finding. Thank you. Other cognitive dissonance and psychosis candidates, they are mere candidates at this stage. Honorable Honorable Kumbuzo. Can you please uh, take your seat again? There's another hand. Yes, Honorable Member. Chairperson, I insist with respect to Rule 84, that Honorable Dr. Grozzi must withdraw because he insulted the President, His Excellency. Listen, Chair, can I... Honorable members, we can't, we, I can't now hear the point of order no. because you are, you are drowning a member that have given a privilege to speak now, please. No, I'm arguing, Chair, that the... The Honourable Member Ndlozi must withdraw. He is insulting the President to say that that psychosis it has to do with the effect of the mind. So, yeah, it's a mental illness. That is not allowed, Honourable Chair. And it's a parliamentary. Thank you, Honourable Member. But I have made my ruling that will consult Hansard and a considered ruling will be made thereafter. Thank you. Continue, Honourable Closing. Are the candidates of this mental phenomena is Honorable Kumbuzo, a C admitted CR17 funds beneficiary implicated in the Zondo report on Denel and a Garakwaba Palaburum local municipality Waunyaka Lidi. Perhaps you might want to consult with Honorable Tembi on the VBS question. She may educate you because she was a mayor when the funds were deposited of Pulukwani local municipality to the bank. What was the purpose of building that bank? The president also says a lot about jobs, but the fact of the matter is in 2019, when you were sworn in, there were 16.3 million employed people. Today, there are 16.7 million people. The difference is about 400,000, not 2 million. Not 2 million. So even the numbers seem not to be correlating. The reality is there is no solution that is envisaged from the political and economic strategies of the current government because it does not centralize industrialization in macroeconomic planning. The development of the productive forces, the chronic problem of unemployment is only going to be resolved by a country that produces the things that it consumes. And therefore, you've got to centralize industrialization, which at the moment it's not happening. For an example, the public procurement bill does not align at all with industrialization. There is no mention of leveraging state procurement budget direct to re-industrialization. Instead, the bill seeks to place measures to address professional ethics, pricing issues, accountability, and transparency. You should use your buying capacity as the state to buy locally manufactured goods just from your procurement budget alone. That is not there. The Black Industrialist Program is actually the greatest and tragic joke 
on black people. In 2022, we received the report that there was an allocation of 36 billion rands for 1,000 black industrialists. If you take these figures at a nominal value, you are looking at 37 million rands per so-called black industrialist. Ford invested 12 billion, of which 4.5 was a government incentive test scheme benefit. To construct the Silverton plant in Pretoria, Toyota received 2.6 billion. 2.6 billion. And black people are, are expected to industrialize with 37 million. You see the joke there. The IDC was at the center of apartheid state-led development. It not only was creating companies like Sasol, look at the industrial scale of Sasol. Perhaps there is a, 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 a lack of understanding of what true industry is. The IDC was at the center of the creation of Sasol, was at the center of the creation and growth of ISCO. But since 1994, show me a single industry that the IDC started with the scale of ISCO, with the scale of Sasol. Your chronic levels of unemployment can only be resolved by a bold step, such as using the IDC within the Department of Trade and Industry to create large-scale industrial projects the size of Sasol and ISCO. But also, when you're talking about investments and markets, the BRICS countries are where you should go. Your relationship with the West has been the most crippling economically. The West only wants your minerals. The, the West only wants you to consume its finished products. Even the market, consumer market of, one, of over 1.2 billion people in the continent of Africa, they still get products from their former colonizers. But China is the one that is developing in the last 20 years. They are responsible for large-scale infrastructure projects across the world. They are the ones that are building the biggest, most sophisticated infrastructure projects than anyone else. So if you want to industrialize, you've got to look to the BRICS countries. You've got to go to China and, and literally request build, operate, and transfer projects. So if you want to build a train, from Deben to Musina, Mr. President, perhaps you do not enter into the delusion of repeating the same thing that you've been doing over the last 30 years as the ANC. Go to China. The people of China will build a speed train in less than a year, and then it will occur from Deben to Musina. The industrialization project must also be at the center of the competition laws. For an example, competition laws are not the instrument of transformation. Even when they are in place, price fixing, collusion, market power abuse, price discrimination, and monopoly industries continue. When the Competition Commission makes findings, the Finance Minister has the power to overrule them. When the Competition Commission identified that the private sector health market was abusing its power through price fixing and monopolization, Nothing happened to them. That tells you the power of these industries. If you want to heal, Mr. President, from this emerging mental condition within the GNU, perhaps you must come back tomorrow with a concrete admission that business cannot be usual. Otherwise, we will interrogate and scrutinize the state of your mind to the end. Thank you very much. Yeah, not a I will now...